Welcome in, everyone, to another episode of the Arena Football League podcast. I'm your host, Rod Villa Gomez. Exciting times going on. What a day to be an AFL fan. We have so much great news and so many great things that have gone on over the last 24 hours. What better face and what better name to bring in to talk all about it than the commissioner? Well, welcome him back to the show, Mr. Lee Hutton, commissioner. Welcome back to the show. And I mean, listen, as a fan already of this league, today was like Christmas in March. So thank <laughs> or, or an early birthday present as it was. My birthday is tomorrow. So thanks for the early birthday present. Well, Feliz Cumpleaños. Let's let's get into it. I can tell you um, people have been wondering, you know, what what the sound is becoming uh, coming from behind the wall because uh, uh, Travell and I are hard at work. We're uh, we made some big, big promises uh, that we would be on big, big platforms. I've always said we'll be bigger. I've always said we'll be better. And now I'm going to say that we're going to think beyond that. Uh, and we are so pleased uh, that some of our hard work uh, is coming to fruition, coming to life. Uh, and there's nothing bigger. There's no better partner out there uh, to, be, to be teamed up with the NFL Network. We're so excited. Yeah, well, so we buried the lead, yes. The NFL Network will be the carrier of this league. 30 games this season, all on NFL Plus as well. I know there's a lot of excitement around that. And, and I mean, this, this league has been steeped in broadcast history anyways, right? It's been one yep. of the, the glowing points of the AFL is that you've been able to watch it. You've been able to watch the games. You've been able to keep – professional broadcast going and i mean this is huge for you to come out of the box and, and score the nfl network that's right well i can tell you anytime that you get at the plate you want to hit a home run nobody loves singles right so so i think we we knocked it out the park on this one but i think what is uh, uh just very uh spectacular remarkable uh about this partnership is I, that football in its various forms, you know, uh, football I played was outdoors. Uh, I, and then uh, we had the great invention of arena football, uh, which brought good action. Now you have flag football. You have all these, you know, various forms of football as it morphs. But at the end of the day, you know, it gives us the football enthusiasts an opportunity to enjoy football in the fall, uh, to enjoy it in the summertime and to now enjoy it in the springtime. Uh, and I think that's what the NFL Network and, and certainly what we want to do uh, is we want to sit at the promontory of arena football and indoor football. Uh, that's just, you know, the competitive nature uh, that we bring. Uh, but most importantly, uh, we want to also control spring football. We want to uh, give people who are making that transition from NFL, uh, outdoor football, uh, who still want some little uh, fast action. It's just, you know, they're, they're, they're not freezing uh, in, in cold weathers. Now they're eating outside in the barbecue and they can watch it in their home no matter where they are. So uh, we're, we're, it's, I, I cannot, words, I cannot explain how uh, grateful and uh, excited we are with the NFL partnership. And not just that, from a fan's perspective, too, to know that you can turn on your television and not have to search around and not have to figure out where this is streaming or, or how do I get to this? I mean, it's it's quite simple to find. And, and I think right then and there, that, that, ought, to, that ought to set all you guys as fans uh, uh, ablaze, just knowing that <clears throat> I can just turn on the TV and watch a game now and, and relax. Right. Well, you know, we also think that the hard work, and I've always said this, um, you know, no matter what where the football is being played, uh, we need to support it, whether it's the NFL, whether it's other leagues that play indoors, uh, the AFL football will always support it. We want, uh, you know, I, I kind of think in a variety of hats, you know, one one end I have the commissioner's hat, that's my obligation and my duty. Uh, on the other side, I also have uh, the hat to wear, uh, where I'm a former player. You know, what would I want if I was a former player? And what I would want is kind of like a charcuterie board of opportunities, whether it's at this league that may just be at home or the Arena Football League that is showcasing on NFL Network, I get to choose my flavor. Uh, if I was a fan, I want to have access at my fingertips at all times. And like you said, you know, where do I go? And, you know, that decision or that guessing game is done. Uh, you know, after the NFL Network, where will the AFL be next? I mean, if I can play the football on the moon, we'll be there. 
there. I don't know how gravity, <laughs> you know, would, would work with that, but uh, we we will play it. And uh, you know, this is something that I think not only benefits the AFL, but I think really benefits uh, just any and other leagues that play indoor football because you know we have I don't know what they are now. You may have to help me on this one. Are they Gen X's or uh, we're past the millennials, Gen Y's? I, I don't know. You know, whatever they're called now. Um, you know, they they really didn't get a chance because they're young to really see uh, arena football in the form that we get, got to saw it. Uh, and so we're getting a lot of young, new football fans who are like, hey, I can belly up to the action. This is uh, fun, as fast, as high pace, high scoring. Uh, and giving them access uh, to this certainly helps out everybody. And sometimes radio silences just means that you're working hard behind the scenes and you were. So now that this is out, now that this is official, now that we all know what you've been working so hard on, how are you feeling? How does it feel to have this finally out there? It feels good. And I will even dress the radio silence. There's a lot of times where, you know, I come from Texas and I, I lived in the, uh, I, you know, in, in kind of the, the country part of Texas. And a lot of times you have these farms with a bunch of chickens and they would cluck and they would cluck. Uh, and you didn't understand what they were, what they were saying, but they were loud and they were trying to say something. And we hear everybody from other leagues who, you know, make predictions and make stabs at us. Uh, I, I, and all I do is just remember those chickens. Uh, now, at the end of the day, uh, when the sun goes down uh, and we prepare to eat our dinner, we take one of those chickens. <laughs> and boy, they were good and juicy. Uh, but they were getting ready because we're clucking. You know which chicken we, we chose first? The loudest one. <laughs> and so, uh, so uh, you know, after the chickens stop clucking, it gets quiet. Uh, and then that's where we come in and say, hey, this is for the fans. Uh, this is for you. Uh, this is our hard work. And, and quite frankly, uh, I think the fans are our motivations. And, you know, when a fan comes up to me, you know, let's, let's take one of those loud chickens and have a meal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, there are some questions you talk about the fans. I just want to address these because these actually kind of lead into what I was going to get into. Uh, Scott mm -hmm. Larson wants to know, will the AFL website stream all the other AFL games? How are those going to be uh, broadcast? That's a good question. Absolutely, yes. We have a partnership with Wave TV, uh, and it's it's interesting because once you um, and I'm learning too as we go. I'll be the first one to admit this. Uh, when you uh, decide uh, and understand your obligations, especially for uh, our our partnership with the NFL, uh, there's some do's and don'ts and some things that we uh, agree to to make sure that that platform uh, is the is the highest priority. Uh, now, with that being said, once we establish those parameters, uh, then everything else just kind of falls in place, and so uh, we want to make sure that uh, every team, every market uh, that you may be a fan of, whether it's Salina, uh, whether it's uh, Philadelphia, no matter where it is, that you have access at your fingertips. And, and the easiest is streaming. We live in this new tech world. Uh, and I said it before, we are going to be a tech company. We're more than just football. We're about entertainment, no matter how you can get it. And it needs to be at your fingertips. So we're, we're really excited about Wave TV. Now they can go to work as we get uh, closer to game day. So are you, uh, are you enlisting the help of local broadcast talent? Is that how you're going to fill out your broadcast teams? That's exactly right. You know, so we're, we're, we are going to get uh, some national uh, broadcast talent uh, with NFL broadcasters. Uh, there's names like Ari Wolf, uh, uh, who we've been in contact with. And, you know, just those names, when you, when you call out those names, I mean, you know, these individuals are just historians of the game. You know, they can they can uh, listen to the game and probably do a play by play or or really broadcast it in their sleep. And so we want to make sure our product is very uh, uh, clean and very uh, favorable to the fans. Uh, then also we are going to go to the, some local markets where there's some familiar faces, get into the community and make sure that we have the national and then local kind of working together. Uh, and, and again, for those uh, teams that have already been in existence, sort of that have that basis i'm sure that'll be good for them to kind of just move into this next uh this next phase of their their team absolutely uh dave wants to know will any playoff games be on the nfl network what's the playoff schedule like 
Yeah, right now, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we are uh, talking to the NFL Network. Now we have the regular season done. Uh, and what we are considering, and this will be announced in the in the several weeks, uh, is kind of where our playoff locations are going to be. Uh, some playoff locations uh, are going to be in cities where we don't have a team that's playing this year. And one of the reasons for that is, number one, we want to expose uh, AFL football to uh, individuals outside our market. Uh, we also want to test uh, some markets to see how good they're going to be if we're going to bring in a new team. Uh, some of the markets that we're talking to right now are markets where uh, former AFL teams used to be, and they already have fans there, uh, and they have arenas that we know that can uh, you know put on a show. Um, uh, but we are going to have the NFL Network uh, as part of that. It's going to be consistent. It's going to be even bigger at that time. So the answer is Yes. How about the championship game? Yeah, championship game, absolutely. I mean, when you have a partner with NFL, they're they're just gonna they're, they're gonna, we're gonna ride with them. I, I shouldn't even say they're gonna ride with us. We're gonna ride with them. They've just been absolutely phenomenal. And when you see press releases where even Troy Vincent, uh, you know, comes in and and takes out time for the day, the one thing that I respect on any hardworking individual uh, is their time. And for these key people, you know, people who are high up in organizations, uh, saying it's important for me to take five minutes, 10 minutes uh, to show support for our league. Uh, we, we, I mean, it's just a humbling experience. And it really is, again, because this is a, a sight unseen type of a situation. And so many yep. people have gotten burned before by these types yep. of things. But, you know, you build on a solid foundation and, and you watch it grow. That's right. And sometimes you just got to play the play. <laughs> yeah, run the play and, and hope that it you goes. Run the play. Different. That's right. <laughs> Um, last thing on, on this broadcast deal, I know this has been the biggest uh, story in the room, and, and obviously as we continue to, to go down toward the beginning of the season, more will be uh, revealed and, and more will be explained. Um, so I just want to know some of the biggest challenges, though, what you've been dealing with juggling with some of the national and local partners and all the interests. And I know there's a lot of different ideas melding together. What's What's been some of the challenges? Sure. About it? I, I think the, the first biggest challenge uh, has been uh, – just making sure that um, individuals and companies understand that we are not uh, the the old AFL. Our business model is different. Uh, it's much more uh, a close knit group uh, at the AFL level. Uh, there's not a lot of chefs in the kitchen. Uh, we have went back, and, and quite frankly, I think we're at somewhat of an advantage um, uh, that we uh, get to talk to past commissioners, we get to talk to past owners, uh, we get to, to hear the do's and don'ts and, you know, some of the stuff, you know, we're, we're what's kind of great information uh, and some information we were told we're like, okay, yeah, we're not listening to that. We're going to do it a little differently. Um, uh, but most importantly, uh, what we found out is no matter who we talked to is that there was a pure love for the game. And I think over years that love for the game was lost or forgotten, or sometimes, you know, life, life and other challenges gets in the way. Uh, uh, and kind of slides you off your direction. So I have people around me uh, that no matter what we do, they will ask the question, is this in the benefit for the fans? Now we're going to make mistakes. There's no question about it. Uh, but, you know, we don't want to uh, completely change classic Coke. Uh, you know, we want to stay to our base. Exactly. Uh, our other challenges, quite frankly, is, uh, you know, when you're the new kid on the block, uh, people want to knock you off the bike, even if you got training wheels, uh, and and they're relentless in doing so. Uh, and so, you know, it's um, it, you know that that the challenge most uh, importantly is that uh, you know. Uh, we know what's going on because we've been having the meetings with uh, the NFL, for example, for several, several months. Uh, we knew what was going to happen. We were confident that it was going to happen. Uh, it's been a flawless uh, conversation with them. Uh, and so when you see people taking shots, I, uh, you, you know, it's that wind that kind of starts knocking you off the path to say, you know what, what do we buy into? Is this really fun anymore? Is this something that we want to do? Uh, and then, you know, thanks to some people that work with me and say, no, think about the fans. You know, when when we made this announcement that we're coming back, 1.1 billion people stopped what they're doing to look at it. And that's something that's pretty remarkable. That means that 
that uh, it's just not one person sitting somewhere in Kansas or, you know, uh, Washington or Oregon. There's a collection of people. I mean, you know, countries don't even have that many people. And so, you know, while there's a lot of pressure to get this done, uh, there's also significant motivation uh, to keep us going. And I, you know, I've said it before, uh, that, that we're pretty tough here. Uh, we're not going anywhere. Uh, as much as the chickens start to cluck, uh, you know, we just prepare a meal. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's not just one guy behind a microphone in California excited for this too. I mean, you, you, the chat's been blowing up since we've got nonsense. We've got mm. people saying they can't wait for this to, to no jump good. off. John Jensen saying, can't wait to bring the call to the Pacific Northwest. Thank you, Commissioner Hunt, for making dreams come true. Uh, and for everyone in the AFL, again, it's it's just, you know, so many people out here uh, are, are just, you know, they're, they're excited for this and they're so uh, just thankful for the opportunity that you're giving us. Um, and then Tim Capper wants to know, any update on the AFL docuseries that you've been producing? Are we are we? Oh, Absolutely. Well, I can give you a little update. Uh, I loved him. Uh, yeah, I, you know, one of the updates, we're collecting materials. Uh, you know, when you do the docu-series, um, your biggest challenge is um, not not the storyline, believe it or not. You know, because right now, you know, every day the storyline starts to morph into something else. You know, while we started, you know, this storyline as kind of this big uh, morphing project, and that I think that still is. Uh, now the storyline starts coming into, um, you know, when I was talking to some of the guys uh, with Philadelphia team. Uh, and, and, you know, their path and uh, their desires and their dreams. And the storyline gets very specific. And, you know, it's kind of like that movie where everybody meets at the intersection, uh, but their path in getting there has its own unique story. And so what we're trying to do is get a docu-series where you, you can see it from different perspectives. Number one, people want to see it from my perspective. What What is it by, you know, having your face on the chalking block, you know, and how much chicken are you really eating, you, you know, uh, with with that, because uh, there there's sometimes we have to, uh, you, you know, say, golly, you know, that clucking is is, is kind of true. Maybe we we should change our direction. Um, I, I, you know, Travell as a CEO, you know, they want to see it from his direction uh, of, of, of a financing. Uh, and most importantly, our coaches have a story to tell and our players have a story to tell. And we're even going to go out and get fans. And so as we uh, start, you know, playing games, that content, as we start doing this, this game day atmosphere, we're going to try to get that content. Uh, and then as we kind of put this together, we really want to tell this story that um, uh, is uh uh, is a timeless kind of situation, you know, and, and I think that's what, what great memories are about. I mean, are we doing something uh, historic? Um, I, I remind myself every day, I think we are. Uh, you know, we literally are writing history as uh, every day that we're doing something. I mean, today was a historic moment. Uh, this is something that if we love it or hate it, everybody's going to look back and say, this is what happened on March 14th, uh, 2024. Uh, and I think, you know, for me, uh, my father passed away um, uh, when, when the hurricanes hit, hit Galveston, in Texas. And, you know, uh, what we have as our good moments are the memories where we shared, you know, um, an experience of going to the Rockets championship uh, game or Houston Astros, you know, and Jose Cruz, uh, you know. And so those are the experience that we want to try to um, uh, provide. And the docuseries, I think, is one way uh, to, to really get this lasting uh, uh, historical monument uh, for people to kind of refer to. So that docu-series, I, I couldn't be more prouder. As a matter of fact, uh, we are going to uh, be shooting about 100 interviews uh, coming up, which would be our owners and our coaches, uh, uh, key players uh, in one room, uh, which is basically kind of a private AFL media day uh, where we can just get people uh, in, a, in a room, ask them questions, uh, let them really passionately and emotionally tell their story of how they how they met at the intersection. Uh, and then we're going to move on to training camp and then get the fans' perspective as well. And we've seen so much success over the course of the last couple of years, too, with F1, Drive to Survive, Absolutely. last cars just launching theirs, you know, all, all of the different types of ones that we've seen. So 
Um, definitely love to, to have this one out there in the public as well. Um, all right, let's move on to another. I, I know this is a burning question from a lot of folks, Coach, and I know that we're going to touch on it here in just a second. So this kind of segues nicely into talking about the Philadelphia soul. I mean, there are a lot of fans out there that are wondering what Michael's wondering. Kamish, is there any worry about the soul ownership and the soul, a storied franchise not playing in Philadelphia? As an avid soul fan, it's worrisome. I, how, how do we address this? I can tell you there is not uh, there's not a fan group that I'm starting to love more than the Philadelphia Soul fan group. I mean, they are some of the best in the land. Uh, I can tell you, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, I always want to be as transparent as, as possible, and, I, and I'll do uh, that here. Um, every week, ever since uh, last year, uh, we've had updates with our teams. We have some teams who have been playing uh, uh, years, you know, they have everything set. Uh, as we got closer to the point, you know, pads, helmets, arena, all this kind of uh, items, uh, it started to um, raise some flags that uh, uh, the Philadelphia Soul uh, was not at the same um, uh progress uh, as the other teams. Um, one of the things that is very difficult uh, from uh, a commissioner's uh, uh, seat, and I remember when the NBA had to make you know similar uh, situations with Donald Sterling, where they had to come in and say, look, you know, we're, we're, we're going to change the face of this. Uh, it's not an easy conversation for anybody. Uh, I think, um, you know, uh, individuals that uh, take on this you know, Herculean task. Uh, they do so with the best intentions. Uh, you know, there are some times, and you know, trust me, my wife will tell you, I'll start a project, and sometimes I don't finish it. You know, for a lot of reasons. Um, but yeah, you know, the one thing that uh, you have to do in in you know my seat is make the hard decisions. And you know, um, the one thing that I I wish I would have done is made it a little bit earlier. Uh, but it is what it is. Now, uh, in that time period, I, what. Uh, the league did. We took over that team. Uh, we will be looking for uh, new ownership, whether they be from Philadelphia or whatever. I don't care. I want uh, individuals that uh, really kind of uh, are ready to roll up their sleeves and uh, see this project through. Uh, in that time period, we did get an arena. Uh, so there will be Philly games at home. Uh, I, Philly, I, I, I want to be playing on team uh, on, on the NFL Network at home. Uh, and, you know, some of our motivation to really uh, or my motivation to kind of pull the trigger uh, really dovetails into us being a partner uh, with others and making sure that we uh, do our our side of the, of the, the job. Uh, and so because that, uh, you know, the first thing I did uh, when I made that decision, while well, some of the information uh, was leaked uh, out, uh, that I made that decision before I got to address uh, the public, which happens sometimes, uh, I met I met with the players. Um, that team is fully loaded with players. Uh, they have 35 players uh, that are ready to start camp uh, uh, in the first week in April. Uh, Coach Pimmel is one of the greatest guys that you can ever meet. Uh, he is passionate about the Philadelphia Soul. Uh, most importantly, he is passionate about his players. Uh, he is passionate about uh, Philadelphia and the fan base, um, uh, even from a guy who currently lives in Idaho. Uh, he, he's, he's just a great guy uh, with a lot of wealth and experience of indoor football uh, overall. You know, we're, we're not just talking about the arena. Uh, he's coached in other leagues. And um, he and I met on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, he's been absolutely wonderful. So we met with the team, uh, I think last week, but I can't remember spe specifically. I let the guys uh, treat me like an open book. They asked all their questions. Uh, you know, of course, it was an opportunity for uh, some of those guys to be approached by other leagues. Uh, and my suggestion to them uh, is that I would never want somebody in a relationship that was uncomfortable for whatever reason, because it is is not good. As a former player myself, uh, if opportunities came along and it felt good to me, I don't want to be trapped. And so, you know, I told them that we love them. I told them that we want to be a league to put players first. And by doing that, uh, we will let them uh, explore. 
uh, but before they walked out the door, uh, they got they got to hear my speech. Uh, and uh, thankfully, after that, I've had so many players call and say, uh, just just the commissioner themselves uh, I, taking time to talk to us uh, was something that has never happened before. Uh, and uh, while that wasn't my intent, uh, you kind of sit back and say, you know what, this is how powerful this position is and it actually means something uh, to the lives of, uh, of a lot of these uh, uh, people. Uh, so uh, to answer your question, uh, the Philadelphia Soul, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, quite frankly, will be um, uh, our uniforms are already done. Uh, so we're making um, uh, kind of a last kind of review to make sure uh, everything's in place. And so we're going to do a uniform uh, reveal. I can give you an idea that the uniform is still obviously going to have the, uh, I don't know, is it baby blue or what is it? Uh, uh, powder blue, baby powder blue. Powder blue, yeah, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be the same. Um, uh, and uh, they're going to, I'm trying to see what else uh, is, is kind of similar to that. You know, so you have the powder blue, the white pants, the, the powder blue pants, uh, and then you have the way, I mean, a lot of college footballs, you know, they can, they can change up the uniforms as they see fit. So you'll see a lot of that. Uh, but we're excited. I mean, I, I can tell you after uh, talking to the new arena, which I can announce uh, today, uh, you will see this uh, in a formal press release. Um, but we are going to have them at the Cure Arena. Uh, some of that information was out, and I, I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of the players were excited. That's probably how it, it got out, uh, and that's okay. Um, but the Cure Arena, uh, we um, were really pushing, and I think the previous owners were really pushing for uh, the Wells Fargo Arena. Um, and, and quite frankly, the Cure Arena wanted us. Um, uh, they reached out to us. I had uh, a very early uh, conversation. Uh, their staff and their team is absolutely wonderful. Uh, they want to service the Philadelphia Soul as they had in the past. Um, uh, and they plan on rolling out the red carpet. I, I can tell you once I, I come down, I'm, try, I'm probably going to come down in a couple of weeks uh, to Philadelphia uh, to make a, a press release, uh, an in-person uh, kind of press conference. And we're going to do something in Philadelphia and then at the arena. I want all the Philly fans to come out. Uh, I think they are going to be uh, very surprised at uh, how this arena wants to partner with them uh, on an intimate basis. And that's something that was kind of uh, close to me and one of those things that I desired, especially for Philadelphia, uh, because it seems uh, when we started this venture, uh, there's been kind of a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't say heartaches or heart, uh, maybe heartburn, uh, <laughs> you know, is appropriate. Uh, so you can put your Pepto-Bismol away. Uh, we are going to be playing and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you guys. And I, I will be there uh, at, at a lot of the games for Philadelphia. Love that. Well, we got a clarification. We got it. It's electric blue. For electric Michael. blue. I love that. Electric blue. I think Prince had a song. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I think he did. Um, and then and then one thing, uh, Jaws, people want Jaws. They want bring back Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fantastic? I can tell you, I love, I, I love Ron. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, you know, this goes to show our support and, and Ron's organization will, uh, I, you know, attest to this, uh, is that every year everybody knows he does uh, the cigar event at the Super Bowl. Uh, myself and Travell, you know, we were there even meeting with the NFL. Um, I, we, you know, sponsored, uh, I, you know, his event along with other sponsors. And that's what we want to do, especially with some of our legacy uh, members uh, of the AFL. I, you know, one of the first uh, people that we talked to when we took this venture way back in Arizona, where I met with Jaws, uh, he was just uh, phenomenal. Uh, his right hand person, Coffee, uh, was with him when uh, before he passed away. And those, I, I've never met uh, two gentlemen who love the AFL, uh, who um, uh, were just certified historians of the AFL, uh, and who wanted to see us succeed. 
Um, um, and, you know, Ron uh, and I personally have talked. Uh, we would love to have him part of the organization. Uh, I do anticipate, and I'm going to throw this out there, I think you'll see him uh, at the games. Now, what type of participation will he be in the organization? I don't know, uh, but the, that door is always open, especially for, for, for Ron. I, I just think he's, um, I, when you think of Philadelphia soul, you, you have to attach his name. And so I'll, I'll, I'm, for one, going to make sure that never uh, gets detached. When you think of Philadelphia in general. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's Ron right. Trump, <laughs> you think of Jaworski. Yeah. Uh, so what, what makes the New Jersey, I mean, I, I know that uh, obviously Philly and New Jersey, people will be like, what? But I mean, yeah. what, what makes that a good fit? You know, I think it was a good fit. You know, when we look at, I mean, you, everything that I do now, I almost look at it as, uh, you know, kind of a marriage, you know, proposal. Uh, is are they in it for the long term? You know, when we say I do, uh, are they looking at the sky? You know, what 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 do their wedding vows actually mean? <laughs> you know, so when they say they're going to be good partners, you know, is that something that they truly mean or is it just uh, words on a napkin that they wrote before the altar? Uh, and um, with uh, with some of the places in Philadelphia, uh, even despite this fan deport support, um, we, we couldn't even get a return call back uh, at the AFL. We, we could not even get uh, the support. Uh, uh, and, you know, as a new league and with some of the historical rhetoric uh, that's out there, I understand. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I also want partners to say, OK, we recognize your challenges. Uh, we want to fight with you and here's how we're going to overcome those challenges because there is not one person that can tell me that this AFL product is a bad product. It's a good product. It is a very good product. Uh, has there been mistakes and, and some bumps uh, uh, along the way? Absolutely. But every sports league has had that, uh, quite frankly. Um, I, and, and that's okay too. You know, what we need to do is collectively figure out how we sustain this particular uh, uh, rendition of the AFL for years and years in, uh, to become. Uh, and as long as, you know, we'll keep coming up with the ideas, we'll keep up uh, coming up with the uh, ability to kind of uh, present these ideas to the public. Uh, now in exchange, you know, come April 27th, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I support you. Well, we, we also need you to come to the games. <laughs> we also, you know, need you to watch it on the NFL Network. You know, we're we're selling merchandise and, and really kind of show your support there. And, and, you know, I, for one, you know, I remember when I was a college student and I remember when, you know, sometimes uh, there are years where you really have to tighten your belt, uh, you know, whether uh, and so that happens. But I think no matter what um, financial situation or where you are, I, I you know, as your ability to get to the uh, to the arenas or not, uh, there's an opportunity for you to support this league. I mean, just a simple tweet. Uh, I, I love the thank yous. I've had people uh, in my hometown, you know, uh, say thank you uh, and show me memories of their uh, of their father uh, uh, that took him to the Minnesota Pike game in 1986. I mean, just kind of reliving those historical moments really just kind of brings that positive energy to move this uh, this AFL forward. Uh, and right, right now, um, while uh, we're here, I'm having fun. Uh, you know, and uh, they, they haven't pushed me down yet off the mountain. So, uh, you know, if they let me stay long enough, I'm going to build a nice home <laughs> and, and I'm going to make myself real comfortable. <laughs> I mean, there's very few commissioners out there at all that will, one, talk to us the way you are and two, smile while you do it, because I'm sure there's a lot of stress that goes along with it. So, uh, we like you said, you hear all the thank yous. And, and if you I mean, go back and look through this chat. If I put up all the thank yous that people have been throwing up, uh, you would you would be here all day. Uh, but I do want to talk about a fan base that does want to know uh, about this. The Georgia Force, they want to know about their opportunities to watch the games as you were talking about. Yeah, no, that's that's good. We are. I'm so that's going to be the next uh, challenge. The we do have a coach for the Georgia Force. Uh, they do have a team ready to go. They have their pads and everything. Uh, we were in one particular arena, uh, and the dates did not work with uh, the new scheduling. So we're trying to work that out, and I am hopeful uh, that we'll get uh, something resolved in the next week. 
uh, but you will have a Georgia Force team. Uh, uh, Durwood, uh, former AFL, uh, uh, just, I mean, he's like Coach Pibble, uh, just knows his stuff. Uh, he's kind of leading the charge there. I, I, I love I love him because he has an Apple phone that doesn't, he doesn't know how to use it, uh, but he he is so old school. I think people are just going to love him, and actually, we'll we'll get him on some interviews pretty soon and, and kind of release those to the public. You're just going to fall in love with him. Uh, that's beautiful. I can't wait to talk. I love, I love having fun with people. That's, that's my whole yeah. thing. In life. So I uh, can't wait to meet another person. Michael wants to know when you're going to buy, when are you going to be able to buy soul shirts and jerseys? When the merch coming out? Commission. You know what? I'm going to look at that. I, I, it should be already up, but I'm going to look at that. I'm going to call our, our tech partner. We were going to get those out as soon as possible. And I can tell you, I, uh, within the next week or so, I'm flying to, uh, uh, to meet with the, uh, uh, the arena directly. Uh, cause I, I always want to kick the tires, uh, tickets will be released, uh, real soon. And so that kind of leads into this too. You talk about the technology that as a technology first league, can you touch on the partnership between humble and myth for their merch? What yeah. Is it yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know, you know, that we're trying to do something, you know, kind of new, you know, uh, innovative, uh, the teams have the ability to, go out and sell their own particular merch, uh, you know, that is kind of dedicated directly to their fans. At the AFL level, we'll sell AFL merch, you know, that, that features the team, but for the most part, uh, AFL. Uh, but the teams really, we, we're kind of giving them the uh, the blessing to go out uh, for their teams. Now, one thing that Humble um, is doing, which I like, and there's something that um, we um, kind of experimented with, and it went very well, and it even went on to the New York Stock Exchange, uh, where the uh, there's the QR codes, uh, and I did a little video uh, of me signing, autographing the helmet uh, by Zenith. I uh, gave a little vignette of our partnership with Zenith uh, in kind of a rah-rah speech of uh, the 2024 season. Uh, and what that does, when somebody told me, and I think I heard this before, but uh, you know, I, when I saw it go from Twitter, uh, there was there was not that little signal that says, okay, this is inaccurate, and here's the real story. Uh, so what I found out is the um, uh, the merchandise for uh, uh, autographs or sports memorabilia is the most counterfeited uh, uh, in the world, uh, which I guess makes sense. And so what that does when you get this particular merch, you're able to kind of see the video, uh, see me autographing that particular object, uh, and then it gets blockchained. Uh, so it's something very, very authentic for, for that particular use. Uh, so the Minnesota myth uh, is kind of one of the teams that are really experimenting that. So just imagine, and, and this is what's going on in my head, uh, 50,000 miles an hour. Uh, as soon as a guy um, uh, scores the first touchdown for a team or scores the game winning uh, touchdown in the in the championship a ball comes off the net he jumps up and it lands uh, on the end zone we can take that jersey off of him we can videotape him autographing that jersey put it the qr code on that tag uh, auction it off or sell it uh, and then whoever uh, ends up with that item uh, they know that this was authentically a game worn jersey uh, and what we also wanted to do uh, as long as the technology were, would permit uh, is that if you got married uh, at a game and you're on a jumbotron or you know any any and everything that you can imagine maybe it was your your la I remember the last game that I, 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 I had with my father with the Minnesota Twins I mean it's a memory that would never escape I uh, just think about you know a memorabilia that you purchased uh, that uh, kind of reflect on that game day where you can actually see it so you know similar to a photo or a video on your phone this will just be uh, connected to uh, uh, the jersey or the merch that was there uh, so we're we're looking to expand that uh, we're also looking to really get into and I said this before I want to get into the virtual reality space uh, where um, I understood for some of our potential vendors uh, that they can um, you know speak to me for an hour 
get my AI, um, uh, I guess, uh, specs. You, you probably know what these are called better than me. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, let's say there's a Kurt Warner or the commissioner, uh, you can literally pick our room, uh, I, uh, you know, purchase some time with, with us and have a beer and ask all the questions as if you were talking to the real thing. And I, I think that type of uh, opportunity is just remarkable. And then we're going to outfit museums and you can go into stadiums and you can walk into, you know, um, you know, the AFL 2024 uh, uh, kind of museum. We also want to outfit uh, a Hall of Legacy. I'm getting rid of the Hall of Fame necessarily for the AFL because I want it. I want it a little bit classier. I really want to remember these moments. And so we're going to do something called the AFL House of Legacy. Uh, and and it's going to be where not only are we doing coaches and players, I mean, just any and everybody who has been um, uh, rightfully uh, uh, supportive of the AFL. Uh, and, you know, kind of think of it like the Heisman House, but a little different. So, <laughs> well, so hey, wait, wait, wait. yeah. Am I talking to the real commissioner right now or an AI? Copy. I, I I don't know. Okay. I'm just saying, <laughs> just pitched it very well, and I don't know if I'm talking to the real thing. So that's right. Uh, but no, so you can pitch myself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, um, one question, real quick, uh, as far as broadcast you, will the rush test game be available next month to the public? The, you know, there's somebody on my team that knows that answer. I don't, <laughs> but I believe so. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, and listen, you've got a million things that you've been doing. So I'm pretty sure that that's on your plate. Uh, how, Dave William wants to know any William was uh, any update on the final rules for the season rather. Sorry. I just finished it yesterday and we uh, that's a good question. And I'll, I'll be happy to come back uh, and, and really kind of go through the rules. Uh, but when I come back, I'll bring uh, our head of official Steve Hyman, uh, uh, who is on our staff. Uh, he is uh, just a legendary uh, ump and ref uh, in his own right. Uh, and so what we did, we kind of took, um, various rules from uh, uh, from across the years of the AFL. Um, we want to have that established Ironman style, uh, but you'll see that the uh, it's going to be kind of a new modern Ironman style, uh, just because we have to be mindful with players uh, in concussion and you know, just make sure that uh, the safety element is there. So there's going to be um, just a small wrinkle in the substitution uh, that's there. And I think what it's going to do is kind of uh, help out with the game and certainly make uh, sure that players are safety are, are safe. Uh, we also kind of extended the, the play clock uh, a little bit to 40 seconds. What that does uh, is uh, it allows um, um, the the game to run faster uh, because we want to get the game between two and two and a half hours uh, for the NFL Network. Uh, now, adding more time on the on the on the clock, uh, how does that make the game faster? Well, you eliminate uh, penalties, and so it's in, in, when you have a penalty, that you have to stop the game, you have to move the ball, you have to do all these things, which really adds uh, not seconds but minutes uh, to the clock. Uh, so, you know, those little wrinkles uh, that we did, um, you know, we kind of went over blitzes, you know, uh, you know, when you blitz, how that's that going to work. So now uh, when you blitz, you have to do it between the A gaps. Uh, you can do either one, but you have to do it between the A gaps. Um, uh, what a lot of coaches, you know, are going to do, they're going to try to move that line. Uh, a little bit, you know, if that line moves, you still got to go between the A-gaps. Now, if the quarterback goes outside, you know, the pocket, then he's free. Um, you know, it's 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 on him. Uh, so we can, I, what I would like to do is get Steve here and we can really go through uh, the nuance changes. But I can tell you the rule book uh, is finished. Uh, and what we will do is put the rule book on our website so people can download. And um, I think I may even do kind of like a, a question and answer, uh, you know, it'd be fun to get, get some of our coaches uh, and actually give them a wonderlick test and see if they can pass it. <laughs> can we do a live? Look, if we, as long as we can do it live, I'm game. Let's go. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you did love that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, all right. So, listen, uh, we've talked a lot and we've covered a lot of ground. And obviously, uh, as we prepare for 2024, no person goes into it without thinking ahead and building ahead a five-year plan, a two-year plan, a three-year plan. We've got a couple of questions that, that re, uh, revolve around that. 
Dave wants to know, Commissioner, do you have anything new to report regarding the AFL franchise effort in, in St. Louis? What is this expansion thought in your mind? How are you wrapping around that while dealing with the present? Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you, I love St. Louis. I, I think it is one of the best football markets. Um, uh, they've proven that with the St. Louis Rams. Um, uh, we actually already have been speaking to arenas there. And what kind of goes into picking the market is, number one, is there a base? Uh, is there um, a comfortability that you can be successful? Um, but once you answer that question, uh, that doesn't allow you just to go in the market and, and set up shop because then you have to have arena availability. Uh, and if you find arenas, then they actually have to have scheduling availability. So there's a lot to go into it. Um, you know, other markets I like outside of St. Louis, I, I like Austin. Austin was kind of difficult. We wanted to be in Austin this year. Uh, but that didn't work out because arena availability. Um, uh, you will see Arizona for sure. You will see Chicago for sure. Uh, we are uh, looking in uh, uh, Charleston uh, uh, right now. St. Louis uh, is also there uh, and uh, Milwaukee. Uh, so those are, those are you know, I don't want to get the cats out the bag, but those are some of our uh, franchise uh, opportunities. What we um, are debating on is we don't want to be too big uh, that we don't focus uh, or lose sight of really kind of what we're doing. Uh, so I would be surprised if we uh, get more than 20 teams or you're looking at four um, uh, beyond what we have now if we really – um, are, are, are expanding faster than what I want. I think we'll probably be no more than 24, uh, but I would look for, you know, within 16 and 20 teams next year. And that's, I think, a misconception that a lot of people do have when they think about, you know, oh, it's easy to bring a team into a into a yeah. city. But these arenas that that you're you're trying to occupy, they don't just sit dormant and wait for a team right. to occupy. They've schedule concerts, they schedule rodeos and, and right. truck events and all kinds of stuff that to make yep. money. So they're not just sitting, waiting, hoping somebody's going to say, hey, can I come play in your arena? Well, and, and sometimes, you know, quite frankly, there are some arenas that uh, are in some of the hometowns. When we called them, they said, Arena Football League? You know what? I remember what happened in 1994. Well, I was in high school, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> this is new. Uh, and so we, we sometimes we have to get over that hump. And, you know, we've made some decisions that, you know, hey, they're 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 not uh, they're not going to come to the altar and say I do. Uh, uh, so, you know, uh, while me and my wife love love is blind, uh, you know, we, we we're not blind going into this. We're full eyes wide open. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can't dance with a partner that's standing against the wall and doesn't want to come out and play. So I 100% agree with you on that one. Well, and so as we talk about, you know, this expansion and, and, and trying to bring more teams into the fold, uh, obviously development of talent is one of the biggest things. And and not just in, in the coming seasons, but obviously in this season. So when we talk about partnerships to grow that, what 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 are partners like the AF, uh, A7FL and the USFA football, how have they been part of, of bringing the AFL to, to the, uh, the field this season? Golly, I, I, let's start with the USA football, wonderful partnership. I mean, the USA football uh, connected to the overall football concept that gets us into the Olympics, uh, uh, which is something that raised our eyebrows. You know, when the Olympics comes, uh, flag football goes in the Olympics in 2028 in Los Angeles, uh, you have really talented athletes uh, at every level of football, whether it's the NFL, whether it's the UFL, whether it's the IFL, or even the AFL. And so one of our partnerships that uh, Travell and I, um, I have massaged is that when uh, uh, football goes into the Olympics, that we will have uh, an opportunity to present our guys to be on Team USA. Um, and, you know, there, there's a legitimate opportunity there because when the Olympics starts, it's in the summertime. And, you know, I don't know the schedule of when flag football will be in the Olympics, but Olympics go all the way uh, until August. And if uh, if that's the case, you're you're you know 
the, the top product uh, NFL athletes will not be able to participate because camp starts, you know, two weeks after July 20th. Uh, so we want our players to be next in line in consideration, uh, if not the first choice because of uh, scheduling conflicts. Uh, and so USA football provides us that opportunity. It also provides us an opportunity for each team to be connected to a flag football uh, kind of organization uh, to not only show um, uh, football in uh, uh, in in you know the various sport, but show it with arena football uh, to to young kids who have no uh, uh, recollection because they were too young with the arena football. Uh, with the A seven FL, um, here are guys who are just diehard, um, you know, uh, football enthusiasts that are not scared to, to, to take a licking and keep on going. Uh, and that partnership uh, kind of uh, provides us an opportunity to hit on their fan base, uh, bring them into um, this arena type, uh, style football. They have arena football in its own right outside. And when I say arena, you know, their arena is a little different. Of course, they don't have pads uh, on, but I mean, tough guys. Um, there are some guys that they have that I went out there and I looked and said, man, this guy can really play. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's not scared of contact. He's, uh, you know, he meets uh, the, uh, the size, strength, and agility uh, that we have. And so um, what we're looking at in the future is to determine whether or not uh, that's an opportunity to take those players and maybe create a developmental league. Uh, with those players. It's too early to do it now, uh, but right right now it's been a great partnership just to kind of share uh, those ideas and thoughts and then kind of, uh, uh, you know, get each other on, on you know, sharing the content with one another. Uh, so I'm really, I, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm just such a football enthusiast, uh, you know, no matter where it is or what form I, I, that it's in, I think, you know, the supporting of, of other leagues is, is kind of what we're here for. Well, and so I was having a conversation with uh, Adam, our, our our general manager here at, at the yeah. AFL podcast, uh, and, and we were talking about just leagues like this and, and the availability that we get to have. And I, I mean, I, there's very few leagues where yeah. I get to sit here and talk to the commissioner and talk and have a conversation. We answer questions from the fans. I mean, that doesn't exist as well. The ac- mm-hmm. accessibility of this league and, and, and those like it, and when you foster those relationships, it just builds lifelong friends and fans and again exactly. future players exactly and i think you hit it on the head i mean you know we we want this uh, you know everybody says that you know let's build a lifestyle i want to go back even further than that beyond uh, we want to build the culture we we want this to be i mean football over the years has uh, always been loved, but it's been attacked, you know, whether it's been the concussion, whether it's been, you know, this or that, it's, it's, it's had, it has its moments. And I think we're, we're past the concussion. We know how to deal with it. People are much more conscious. Um, we're not having the injuries necessarily uh, uh, that are out there. Um, I, all the while, guys are getting faster, stronger, and they're making amazing plays. Uh, and, and I think there's, um, a, a different level for all of us. I kind of look at it like steak. You know, I you know I love to cook. So next time we're on the show, I can I can have I have a AFL apron, uh, and I can show everybody how to make a really kick ass risotto. Uh, so in twenty minutes, so you beat that Bobby Flay. Um, <laughs> but you know, everybody has different steak, and so you know I like mine the the correct temperature, medium rare. Uh, uh, but you go with Travel, he likes his well done. Uh, and no matter how you like it or where it is, uh, there's also there's there's a, a branch or a style of football that really meets your personality. And then when that football season is on hiatus, I uh, you know just because I like medium rare doesn't necessarily mean I won't take a piece of trails. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so you know it's and, and and that's what we are. And the more the more we do this. Um, I, I can tell you, you know, when I go overseas, obviously, uh, uh, football over there is soccer, uh, and they say it's the king. 
you know, my beyond it would love to have, um, you know, we have Arena Football USA. I would love to have Arena Football uh, Mexico. I would love to have uh, Arena Football, you know, overseas uh, where we could play kind of a World Cup uh, every two years. Now, that's a big dream. Um, but I think if we can get the support and really get uh, kind of the international uh, audience to start looking on us, and that's why it's so important to stream on our app. If we can get that, uh, then we're closer to that uh, objective and idea. If I can get uh, this on virtual reality, then we're closer of getting people to have that feel of, of what American football is all about. Commissioner, we're going to need to get you to sign that apron, put the QR code on it, and put it yep. up. It might be a hot item. I'm just saying right now. It, it has a it has a lot of steak stains on it, so and you can add to the value at that point. That's right. right. That's right. Uh, so listen, I, I want to ask one more question before we start to to wrap things up here, because there's always got to be a DJ in the group, and uh, I'm with you yep. on this one. This is this is what I do for a living as well. Uh, Javon Alford wants to know: Will the AFL be involved in daily fantasy sports or sports betting in the near future? It's a big market out there. How, how are you approaching it? I want that future to be now. We are in conjunction and talks with uh, individuals. Uh, we've met with uh, uh, local casinos uh, uh, that are uh, operated by tribal nations, uh, just building uh, relationships with them. Uh, uh, there is a possibility that we may be able to even come out with our own springboard uh, uh, sports betting site. Now that's that's beyond, but there has been some really strong uh, discussions with that. Uh, uh, I see uh, us being able to do that sooner than later. Uh, I think that fan engagement is just necessary. Uh, we have everything in place to do it. Uh, and so hopefully we'll have some news. I, I, I would regret to say right now, uh, we, we don't have that locked and loaded, but now that we have the NFL uh, contract announced, now we kind of know how to, uh, I, I, you know, kind of maneuver within those guidelines. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. I, I think sports betting is uh, just part of football now. It's part of the entertainment. Uh, and so that's one arm that we definitely will have. You had the foodies salivating over steak. You've got the DJ and salivating over betting. So uh, you, you've gotten everybody worked up. Uh, that's right. Sure. I well, I've always, I've always said we want football with this highest level of integrity with a lot of college game day. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I love it. Uh, all right. So listen, as we start to, to bring this conversation to a close, not to make you pick between kids, because obviously as, as mm. parents, we know that it's not, you can't force that, but uh, week one, what game are you going to? Or yeah, game I, 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 I can tell you what I'm trying to do. I will definitely be there in person uh, for the Orlando versus Albany. I, that is just a matchup that uh, you couldn't write a better script. Um, there's, uh, I don't want to say there's, there's bad blood, um, uh, you know, and maybe, you know, we can say it's bad blood, like Taylor Swift, uh, song, but, uh, you know, those are, those are two, uh, teams that are ready to show, uh, who's going to set the standard of AFL play. Um, uh, there's always already been some, you know, respectful banter going back and forth with those two teams. Uh, there's a reason why we put them first. Uh, so as soon as Mr. Irrelevant uh, uh, walks across the stage, uh, the most relevant game that is going to be in the AFL is going to be that one that hits first. So I will be there. I actually got a call Albany, so they because uh, I don't even know where I'm sitting yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I it wherever you want at this point. That's right. Right. I mean, I, I definitely got to go buy a ticket. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I suppose that's probably the right thing to do at this point. That's right. So. That's right. <laughs> uh, I love it. And then is there a venue that you're actually excited to be uh, to be seeing for the first time or maybe again? Golly, I, I you know, I've been to just about every venue. Um, you know, there's they, they have their own unique flair, uh, quite frankly. Um, when I was so impressed with Orlando's venue. Uh, I, I have to say this, I haven't been to Albany's uh, venue, but we'll be there soon. Um, um, you know, I think the first venue that um, I, I really want to um, experience because I think the fans are going to make it um, uh, great is, is the Cure Arena. I, I really do. I, I, I think um, I, I saw some historical clips uh, when they played a couple of games at the Cure Arena uh, um, in, in Trenton. 
Uh, and um, I, I think what makes the arena is not the arena itself. It, it's kind of the people inside. And I think that that place is just going to be rocking. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, I, you know, the people make the arena no matter where you're at. I remember it, it, here in Stockton, it was when we were cheering on our ECHL Thunder, there was 10,000 strong in this yeah. little selling out that arena and it was always packed and always fun so yeah obviously yeah that is amazing and that's what you're hoping for on a week-to-week -week basis for any team that plays that's right that. the only uh, thing i gotta do i gotta wear neutral clothes so <laughs> if, uh, if i'm not wearing electric blue please don't uh <laughs> be upset <laughs> they want to know why why can't you do it yeah uh, that's right last question here i want to take because i think this is something that uh, only you can answer uh, Arena Foot's actually working on the Louisiana Voodoo Media that. Guide. This is interesting. Uh, do we inherit the New Orleans Voodoo Records? If so, this is the 10th anniversary of the Voodoo. How, how's legacy work into these teams? Yeah, that's interesting. We're, 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 we're certainly not going to um, uh, disregard or trash the, uh, the, uh, the history of the AFL. That's always part of our DNA. Uh, but I think as we move forward, uh, we're going to create our own history. So don't throw that away. Make it part of the media guide. I, I definitely I show it justice uh, because I think, you know, when there are a couple of teams that uh, we were initially talking about uh, where we said, I don't care if we have to play, you know, in a parking lot. Uh, I mean, we even, uh, uh, you know, Philadelphia is one where we even start looking in, do we build an arena? Uh, I and I've talked to some people, you know, about how uh, uh, viable it is. I don't, I don't know if the, you heard that, but we were literally looking into building our own arena, uh, and that that still may be the case. Um, but with that being said, uh, you know, we we don't want to throw away history, and I think you know Philadelphia, you know the the New Orleans Voodoo, you know uh, Nashville Cats. Those are teams where we said we want to start first and bring them back in. Chicago was another one. Uh, so you know we're here. So I I think you know with their storied history, I mean we would we would be uh, it would be embarrassing for us to forget the past. Yeah, and and really, again, with names like cats, with names like the Soul, it, yeah. it's just people know, and, and they say, well, if you're if you're just starting over from scratch and you're just saying, well, this is the new version, we don't care what happened in the old version, then you're ostracizing those fans that grew up exactly. cheering for them, you know? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Tim says that's a good choice, and so if Tim says it, we all know it's a good choice. <laughs> we know it's true. <laughs> Our certified historian. I know. Hey, listen, this guy, <laughs> he's forgotten more about arena football than I think I've ever known in my life. So, uh, yes. I love uh, all right, commissioner, listen, we've taken up so much, uh, so much of your time today and we appreciate every second of it. So, um, anything else you want to just put out there real quick for the fans, as I know everybody's scrapping for something they want, they want Absolutely. you to answer all their questions. Absolutely. No, I, I, and with, with the fans just continue to do what you're doing. Uh, you know, please go out and buy tickets. So we'll make this push. You're going to see more content from us. Uh, I've always said, you know, once we get started and we uh, start speaking, we'll never shut up. Uh, today, today was a very, very loud uh, shout. Uh, so you're going to see more and more and more to come. Uh, but really support these teams. Uh, it's uh, I, I can tell you, you know, behind the scenes, I can't take um, uh, uh, any or all the credit for working hard. You know, Travell has worked extremely hard. I, I have some assistants that work uh, extremely hard. Uh, our coaches have worked extremely hard uh, trying to find uh, uh, great athletes. Our owners, uh, you know, I can tell you they, they, they get pressure just like I do. Um, you know, they're not sleeping at night wondering that, you know, is anybody going to come to the game the first game? You know, is anybody going to buy tickets or anybody to do that? Uh, and, you know, I, I look at it like a dating phase. You know, we're starting to date. Uh, people are starting to say, OK, you know, I can trust what you say. When you said you're going to get the NFL Network and you're going to have a big broadcaster and now, you know, it's there. You heard it from the NFL Network. You know, that 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 level of trust uh, starts to solidify um, uh, the relationship between the league, the team, and the fans, uh, and then ultimately the players. Uh, they're they're ready to perform. I can tell you, and you know, you 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 guys talk to some of them. They, I mean, if if we if we could play tomorrow, 
we would have not one player be late. Uh, they are just ready to go. Um, I mean, they reach out to me on a daily basis. I try to I, I try to respond to most of them, um, but I, the the response has been uh, utmost respect. Uh, I've watched more film than I've ever watched, and um, you know, I I think if uh, if I had a, a last. Uh, you know, kind of motivation speech uh, is that if we want the AFL to stay, uh, we're all in this together. So I, I really love you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We are all in this together. And again, this isn't the last conversation we're going to have. I, I look forward to talking to you for until you tell me to yeah. shut up. That's, well, we, that's we, we, we have to, we have to schedule. I really, cause we're going to get this rule book. I, I think it, I think it would be a good show if you guys would have us back uh, to have Steve Hyman, our director of officials, just to kind of give his, um, um, what he sees and, and talk about the rule book and we can kind of go uh, through the important pages. I think that would be really fun. I think it'll be fun. I think everybody else out there thinks it'll be fun as well. So Absolutely. we'll do that as well. Uh, all right, Commissioner, thank you for your time. And obviously, we'll have you back on again uh, very, very soon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody. That was the conversation with our Commissioner of fine hour to have spent i'm telling you right now there was so much ground that we covered i know everybody in the chat is so excited for this we're excited for this uh the big announcement today obviously if you if you miss it nfl network carrying 30 games streaming on the afl app and website all kinds of stuff going on ah, so much to digest from this i i suggest you go back listen to it again if you missed any part of it or if you want to re to hear what you heard you know grab yourself a nice little drink and and and, and cuddle up to this episode because you're going to have a lot to listen to as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely a lot. Tim Capper, 30 plus games. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's, it's, it's going to be an exciting, exciting season as we all get to watch along and cheer our favorite teams uh, along. So I cannot thank the commissioner enough for spending so much time. I, I don't know anywhere else where you get this much time, uh, with a very willing and able commissioner to talk about all things. And, really for you guys as well. And this is this is what we've strived for from the beginning is to be able to give you guys all the pertinent information. Again, it was, you know, radio silence. We talked about it. and uh, and But radio silence meant that they were hard at work. So if you don't hear anything, don't necessarily think they're trying to keep something from you or that we're trying to not give you information because I guarantee you right now that that just means that there's a lot of hard work going on behind closed doors and you've seen the fruits of that work. So all right, we're going to close out this episode because, again, we've gotten we've covered so much ground already. Thank you to everybody in the chat for uh, for being in this and for asking the commissioner questions, keeping him on his toes and just uh, enjoying this as a community, which is exactly what he wants to build. So stick with us. We've got more coming for you on Thursday. We've got a great conversation coming up. You won't want to miss that as well. So we'll see you on Thursday, everybody. And until then, let's get some football going.